Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Nikita Lambert and I am a validation coach. And what I love to do is help people who grew up with narcissistic parents to build a life they love and reclaim their power and find their voice. And I do that through validation and education. What I wanna talk about today is assertive communication and assertive behavior. And I wanted to talk about this because what I have found is that a lot of people who grew up like us with narcissistic caregivers, we don't really know how to express our needs appropriately. We can either be very passive, we can be aggressive or passive aggressive, but not often assertive, which is the sweet spot right in the middle. So let's get down to it. Assertive behavior and assertive communication is communication that respects and advocates for your needs while respecting and advocating for the needs of others, okay? It's when you ask for what you need respectfully and within reason while considering the people that it impacts. Instead of being able to be straightforward and ask for what you want or say what you don't want or don't like, a lot of times if you've been gaslit, put down, shamed, yelled at for expressing your needs or told that you're asking for too much, you can be passive, which is clearly prioritizing someone else's needs and wants and wishes and whims above your own. And so you're just kind of like a go with the flow, a go with the flow kind of person, even if you end up doing things you don't really like to do, or maybe you don't really know what you like to do. And it's because it never really mattered, right? Um, what does it matter what I want to do? We don't get to do it. So you just let everyone else choose like, oh, I'm easy. I can do this. I can do that. It's not really a big deal. Meanwhile, you probably often find yourself in situations that you're not crazy about or like you're ready to leave or you're bored and it's because you didn't make your own desires known. And this can get frustrating. Um, you can feel built up resentment or maybe in your friendships and your romantic relationships or even professional relationships, like you're often getting walked over, like your needs don't matter, like nobody cares about you, or like um, nobody listens to you. And it could be not necessarily that nobody's listening, but that when you're talking, it's not very clear. You could have a lot of fillers and fluff. And this is what I used to do. So if if somebody asks me what I want for dinner, uh, my husband, for instance, what do you want for dinner? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. I don't, I don't really care. Maybe Thai or, or maybe Mexican. I'm not, I'm not sure. What do, you, what do you want? And then he says, oh, I was thinking about that new Brazilian steakhouse. And I'm like, uh, I guess. I mean, if that's what you want to do, I'm not, you know, I'm not really feeling that much meat tonight, but... Maybe, I mean, I could, I could go for it if you're interested in it. And he's like, okay, cool, yeah, let's, let's try it. Um, and then now you could get upset because in your mind you're thinking, I said I want Thai or I want Mexican. And he's just going to say, let's do Brazilian Steakhouse. But you didn't say, I want Thai or I want Mexican. It was maybe, kind of, sort of, I was thinking, maybe this, maybe that, what do you think? And then you like hand it over. It wasn't clear. And so you're thinking because you know how you're feeling, right? But the other person's not a mind reader, but they are assertive. They asked for what they wanted. They were very clear in communicating and you went along with that. And now there's like this, this disconnect and you're feeling trampled over, but you never really said anything clearly. It's a bunch of jumbled mush that nobody can decipher. So that can happen a lot. That would happen with me. And my therapist at the time, she would tell me when I was singing, which is um, if she would ask me a question and I would say, well, I was thinking and she's like, cut it, stop it. Get to the point. Say what you want. What are you thinking? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Were you hurt? Were you mad? What, like, stop it. Uh, and so I would have to cut it short when I would catch myself singing, and I still do sometimes. I've gotten way better, but I still catch it. Um, and when I'm talking a lot, when there's a lot of fluff, you got to cut the fluff 
and say what you want. And this can feel aggressive if you're not used to it, but it's not. It's simply assertive. It's clear. Think of how many people in your life simply state what they want, what the plan is, and you don't find them aggressive at all. There are some aggressive people. We're not talking about them. We'll get to them later. But just the clear people, they're not rude. They're not railroading or steamrolling you. They're just saying, this is what I want. Or can you please do this for me? Um, like in a work setting, or this is the deadline. I need it by then. And they're not rude. They're not mean. They're not out of line. They're just clear. And they get what they want and they get things done because they have that. Now, when you're not used to having the freedom and the space to speak that way, it does feel aggressive. It feels pushy. It might feel entitled, but it's not that. It's not. It's just clear and it's assertive and it's a major part of creating the life you want and doing more of what you love because you say it. Okay, so that is assertive and passive. We've talked about assertive and we've talked about passive. Now, aggressive. Instead of allowing yourself to become a doormat, you may have decided once you've kind of gotten away from the abusive, narcissistic person that nobody is talking to me like that ever again. I don't know who you think you are, but it ain't happening. Um, and so if anybody even comes at you sideways or thinks of not listening to you, as, no, because I want to do this and I don't feel like this and we're going to do this and, mm -mm, and as soon as this happens, I'm going to leave. So <laughs> like, and all of that, and, it, and not necessarily always all that body language, right? But that can kind of be the spirit or the vibe that other people get off of you. And so it's when you prioritize your needs and your wants over someone else's, <clears throat> especially in communication. Um, like if someone is trying to talk to you and express themselves, but you don't want to hear it. So you cut them off. You don't let them finish. Maybe you tell them that their way of thinking is it doesn't make sense. Um, and it doesn't make sense to who, right? Okay, so maybe logically, factually, it doesn't make sense. But something is going on in this person's brain where they're thinking it does. So you don't have to put them down like that. You could talk to them, try to meet them where they are, ask questions to draw them out. But just like shutting it down, it's a little aggressive. Um, and so you don't want to go to that end either because now you become an unsafe space. Not to say that being passive is safe. That's not safe because it's not authentic. It's not true connection. And then again, the resentment that builds up, like it's not healthy in the long run. But the here and now aggressiveness, aggression, it feels, you know, abrasive. So you don't want to do that either. You want to find the sweet spot right in the middle, which is, say it with me, assertiveness. That is the word. That is the word for you. Be assertive. Be clear. Assert yourself. And I have an acronym that I can go into in other videos. And it's ACT for ACT Assertive. A is for affirm. You want to get in the habit of affirming yourself that you have every right to ask for what you're about to ask for or to say whatever you're about to say, to say that you don't like something, to say that you would prefer something, to make a decision, to set a deadline. If it's a work relationship, if this is your job, you are well within your right to expect things from other people if that's their job, right? Um, so affirm, talk to yourself, have a pep talk in the mirror, run it back in the car, whatever you need to do, <laughs> review your job description, review your wedding vows, whatever you need to do to get in the right mind space to say, I'm not crazy and I'm not too much for making this ask or setting this boundary, okay? So once you affirm, you believe it, you can move forward to the C, which is confirm. Now we're taking what we know and we're putting it in action. We're gonna confirm it with our words. We're gonna confirm it with our body language. Have eye contact, sit up straight. Don't look all around the place. It's really hard, it's really awkward, but make some eye contact, okay? Be sure, because you can have assertive language, but if your body language is, you know, all over the place and you're, um, um, and maybe, and well, um, we're not buying it, Patricia. Who is Patricia? <laughs> um, we're not buying it. So confirm. 
It's awkward. It can be hard. Realistically, it took me years of practice and I still have to like run through all of these things whenever I have to have an uncomfortable conversation and, you know, coach myself. Look assertive. Um, but it's important, okay? So confirm it and then trust. It's hard. It can be hard. This is scary. This is new territory. We were never allowed to speak this way, right? Or like if you're used to being passive, you're you're scared to speak up. If you have swung to the other side to be aggressive, now it's okay, well, if I don't just shut them down, what what if they walk all over me? And you have to trust. Trust that your pers the person that you're talking to is a healthy person and that they're going to respect what you're saying. Now we know everybody's not a healthy person, but sometimes we can't see that because we're not speaking assertively. Either we're just pacifying them by letting them make all of the decisions so we don't know if they would respect us or not, or we're always shutting them down and we're not giving them the opportunity to show whether or not they would walk all over us. So when you start interacting assertively, communicating assertively, you have to trust the process. And the process is you'll be able to see who's healthy and who's not for you, right? Who's socially, emotionally mature and available for a functioning relationship with you, partnership in any realm. And if they prove not to be, then you can take the necessary steps to put boundaries and distance. And this is still good because if they're not healthy and they're not respectful and they're not willing to work with you and hear you for what you're saying in an assertive manner that is advocating for your needs while still respecting theirs, do you really want that kind of person in your life? Do you? No, you don't. We're building a life we love here, okay? So get to being assertive. And let me know how it goes. You gotta start acting assertively. Affirm, confirm, and trust the process, okay? So let me know if you're interested in me going more in depth in the acronym or if you have any questions about this, um, and I would love to help you. If you're interested in more content like this, recovering from a lifetime of growing up with narcissistic caregiver, parent, hit subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss a post. And yeah, I'll see you next time.